Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, great news that the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Just come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right under Featured Content. You just hit that subscribe button. You get the opening call for one month for $149. You get it for six months of $695, which is the savings of $199, or 22%. And you can get it for a full year for $1,195, which is the savings of $593, or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. You can subscribe. It works for you for the month. Great. For some reason, it doesn't. You get your money back. Better than also what ends up happening. Basil has about 10 to 12 archives out there that you'll really understand how he looks at the market every day, how you ride that wave. You're going to love it. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I'm doing fine. I'm very concerned. You know, I had mentioned in my show that there's something out there that tells you a lot about Ukraine. They are the uh, second place in the world for barley production, third largest producer and fourth largest exporter of corn in the world, fourth largest producer of potatoes, fifth largest of rye, fifth place in the world in bee production, and then eighth place in wheat. Uh, I mean, we're talking about one of the reasons why I've been speaking to you for quite some time about the price of the uh, those soft commodities. I mean, we are still along in my for my subscribers, the uh, DBA, which is the uh, DB Agricultural Fund, and uh, that's got all those things. It's got the you know. So I, when you look at this and you try to resolve it, and you're looking at crude. You were just talking about the price of you think that where crude oil is going. Um, what what we need to also put in perspective is that nothing. There's nothing that can happen in the next week or two that can just resolve this to the point where I'm not talking about the humanitarian side. I'm just talking about the commodity side where everything goes back to, to normal. You've lost 300,000 people or something like that that have left the country. So all that production is nothing. That's just one country. So I think we've got to take this very seriously in terms of uh, the upside potential in the overall market, but within that, there are some sectors that are actually working to a certain extent um, that I, I'm kind of intrigued with because the really beaten down NASDAQ stocks, there are some of those that have just taken, I mean, 30, 40, 50, 60 percent declines. So in that area, even today, you, you've got uh, the, the Qs and certainly the ETF that we have that has some of these uh, NASDAQ 100 type stocks holding pretty well. So it's. I think this is a period where if you're long anything, you have to be quite specific. You have to be sector related. Um, if you're already in the sectors that are working, that's a good sign Then you have to just moderate, you know, use uh, stops or add to whenever you think you're getting a dip and you think that sector is going to continue. But most importantly, when I was looking, I spoke to you about the candle, this, this particular pattern that I call the Chapman Wave Roman candle. And it's been one of the one of the candles that we've seen in some of the major tops over the years. Back in 2007, the S&P had the same candle one, one month after it made the top. So I spoke about this. I'm going to expand it so that you can see. And while I, I still feel that there's a really good chance that over a period of a couple of weeks, we'll start to form a base and have a really strong rally because the, the intensity of the selling is so, so great. And the uh, if you measure it, you know, the VIX or any sentiment indicator, some of these stocks, are, you know, are really good companies. They've just been beaten, beaten down because of the market. But this particular candle where at highs, the price opens up and has a fraction of a little wick to the upside and then pulls back really sharply and then comes back and then closes a half to two thirds from the low. It creates this power, I call it a Chapman Roman candle because, you know, a Roman candle, you light it and then poof, it takes, you know. Yes. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ugly looking candle in terms of uh, a, a chart in the. Um, stock market, but looking up in the sky is quite pretty. But in the stock market, what I say is if the wick gets taken out in a shorter time span, the long wick that was formed, you've got to be careful because then there could be a test of the low. 
and you've got to be careful that it doesn't break. Well, we tested the low, and then what happened, that was in January. Now, February, we've closed the candle, and we formed, it's not exactly the same thing because the wick is a little too high, but everything else about it is good. And I don't want to see a second uh, Roman candle. And so far, the pattern that we've got to look at is that if there is a weekly close in the S&P below 42.90, it says got to be careful because you could retest the most recent low. That was the low of just the other day, and that was in the 4100 area. So it, I just it might be to, there by the time it finished talking. <laughs> I, 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 I see, you and I certainly hope that does. I mean, that's, that's ugly action. But you're right. I mean, this is the speed of these turnarounds intraday is, is really quite amazing. It is. So just. I just wanted to put a perspective on what I'm looking at here, but that doesn't mean to say that there aren't certain sectors and certain areas that are working. And uh, within that context, I think you've got to be able to put together the panoply of all these different things. So uh, when I look at the over, when I look, say our portfolio, remember for, for weeks and weeks, I've been saying we're raising cash, we're raising cash, any positions we're putting on are really basically trading positions. And uh, quite a number. We have a gold stock. Of course, that's that's acting quite well. We have some of our core positions that we've held. You were speaking about the dollar. And in this particular case, we've been long since 90.07 back in 2018, Washington right all the way up to uh, the, uh, it was 102.99 early January 2020. Then it plummeted down back to 89.21. Fortunately, our stop held in the UUP, and we're still long. And it's very interesting, and that's what I'm saying. This is a very complex market in many, many ways because I've been also speaking to you about the tradition that I have in the back of my mind is that when the vol stocks get volatile, meaning they're going down, that's a Wall Street terminology, very yes. volatile, um, money tends to flow into bonds. And then what happens is the bonds rise. It's called the safety of bonds. Yields come down. We have only just seen that in the last week. So that's the first time that we've got that, which tells me that the uh, we cannot rule out that whatever the Fed is going to do, they're going to have no choice but to at least do some some uh, you know some upgrade of of the of bonds in terms of the yield. But at the same time, what I'm thinking is they're also going to look at the overall economic perspective. So they kind of caught between a, a rock and a hard place. So I think that the dollar. I've always considered the dollar to be just. At the back of my mind, I treat it as an icon of the American economy. It's like Holly Davidson, let's just say. It's just an icon around the world. But it's also a go-to place because it's for forever it's been the safest place to be. So I think that's one of the reasons why the dollar's going up, yet gold is screaming higher. So I've always said there are times where you've got to separate the volatility index, the dollar, bonds, and um, in this particular case, is going to be gold. So I think what we're looking at here is, is a very complex market. You just got to protect it. Cash is a good position to be in uh, for safety. And at the same time, we're trying to get some stocks that have this counter trend rally. And that's what we're trying to trade. And folks, it's very easy to get Basil's news out. Come over to our website at TFNN, right under featured content. You're going to see the opening call. You hit that button. Basil, have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow morning. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.